find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, happy National Podcast Day. It's the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg here live from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, celebrating Podcast Day with, well, it's actually always Podcast Day on Tuesdays for us, so it really worked out well for us. Uh, we got an all-star cast here lined up, of course. Uh, he's back on the homestead. It's uh, John Chachilla at Chilla on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? pretty good how are you doing today all right all right exciting celebrating this i'm loving all the talk on twitter it's been happening around podcasting today That's very nice. uh also with us returning i think we've, we've we got him a new modem oh we didn't we, we didn't we didn't <laughs> get him a new you can modem. take credit for it if you want uh, yeah sure we appropriated a new modem from comcast <laughs> and his internets are back and mike pound your uncle crappy uncle crappy.com is back as well I and and I after after the last attempt, I am I am so happy that this is working. Yes, yes. I it is actually, and he looks a little sketchy on the video. That's actually because of the computer he's on. I'm telling you, it's is our computer, not his connection. It's a little little topped out. We gotta get a replacement for it. Also, <laughs> back with us is uh, she's a big big design and other other things. The original Pittsburgh blogger uh, Cynthia Klosky. How you doing? Can I call you the original? I know you're one of the original. I'm one of the, well, I mean, there were many Pittsburgh bloggers, but we're the ones that claim the name. So I don't know. In the internet world, that means a lot. Yes, it does. <laughs> awesome. Uh, of course, this is the show where we uh, get geeky, uh, talk awesome tech, awesome things going on. Today, we're going to talk a lot of awesome internet things going on in particular. Uh, of course, you can find us here uh, every Tuesday at Um about 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We're at least setting up, starting to get going. Uh, you can join us in the chat room there, just like uh, guys. Hey, Chachi's in there. Hot Wheels is in there uh, joining us uh, as they do every week. Um, letting us know where we're wrong, what we're missing. So if you have an awesome thing of the week, you can stick it in there, too. You can also drop us a line uh, with your thoughts and awesome things at awesomecasts at sorgatronmedia.com we're on twitter at uh, awesomecast uh, we're also on facebook on google plus and you can check out all the episodes and all the links and our sponsors we'll talk about them later at awesomecast.net we've survived the wordpress move yes um you can ask me about that some other time. I'm still recovering from that one. Um, so with that, let's get started with our awesome things of the week. And guys, I wanted to get started with, it is National Podcast Day. We've been running the ads on the show here uh, for the last several weeks. Um, so I wanted to, that, that's my awesome thing. There's a National Podcast Day. We talked to uh, one of the guys responsible for that uh, a couple of weeks ago. You can go on our, our YouTube and check out that interview by itself at uh, youtube.com slash awesomecast, um, of course. Uh, so I guess, you know, for national podcast day, uh, you know, it's a big kind of awareness thing. Say, Hey, podcasting's here, uh, uh, you know, show it to new people, you know, let other people know other podcasts. Um, so what are you guys listening to? <laughs> First of all, other than this great network here, of course, um, I mean, you guys all frequent podcasts in some shape or form, right? Uh, Cindy, how about you? Let's start with you. I, I, I keep forgetting. Like, it's hard when I remember I have like three people going on on, on, on Hangouts sometimes. Uh, but, but Cindy, how about you? I um I, I listen to podcasts. Um, it kind of depends on what the set, set situation is. So I'm kind of off and on with them. But the ones that I pay attention to most are um, the Script Notes podcast by John August. John August is a screenwriter, as you might guess from the name Script Notes. And he's based out in L.A. Um, and then, he, and so he does a, a podcast with a fellow named Craig Mazin and they're both, um, not only, um, sort of famous, they've written many famous movies and, um, and, and John August name. Anyway, so they, they do have done a lot of stuff, but they also know a lot about sort of the unions and the business of, um, of, of Hollywood. And so it's just a fascinating podcast and they do things like they'll break down the entire screenplay, um, of groundhog day for example nice, so, nice. a really good one is it is so this I the one here the uh, script, script dr eric is that right um no um, script notes is the name of oh, script thing? notes i'm sorry 
Um, and it's johnaugust.com slash podcast. Oh, okay. So they're, they're, they're pretty awesome, and they're just sort of interesting. And they also do a nice transcript every week. So if you, for some reason, can't listen, you can go back and read. And scan it. Nice. Awesome. What, what about you? Uh, what about you, Mike? I, I, there are a bunch. I, I, as I kind of consider this, I realize that I'm, I'm kind of heavy on, on sports guys. But, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a fun thing to be able to, to, to get caught up. When I when I have the time, uh, a new one for me is called Men in Blazers. Um, it's it's not a new podcast. These are two English guys who have worked uh, in television in the United States for a long time. They talk, they they have a very very uh, uh, they have a lot of stupid fun with um uh, with soccer around the world. Uh, they're they're heavy into the uh, English Premier League right now. But um, as, as someone who's just uh, kind of pays attention to that stuff, it's it's very uh, it's a very entertaining podcast to get into. Um, a long time one for me is the Tony Kornheiser show. Uh, it's not done exclusively as a podcast, but it's a it's a uh, recording of radio show, local radio show that he does in Washington D.C. every day. Um, uh, so it, it's it's a it's ostensibly a sort a sports show, but he gets into a lot of politics, gets into a, a lot of pop culture stuff. Um, it's a lot of fun uh, to uh, to do. So this those are. Um, uh, those are pretty representative. I also I also like uh, NPR's All Songs Considered. It sort of forces me out of my my comfort zone and and uh, gets me to listen. Awesome, awesome. Uh, what about you, Chilla? So I the- pretty much hang out on the tech side of things. Can you hear me? I yeah, just yeah, we got you. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, mainly on the tech side of things. So I'm listening to Windows Weekly, Mac Break Weekly, Nerdist, and the one that I picked up that they don't update all that often. But AFP 548, which AFP548.com, um, AFP is the old Apple filing protocol. Um, it's a bunch of Apple administrators from all around everywhere, um, pretty much giving helpful hints to enterprises, companies, schools on pretty much how to deploy Max at scale rather than just running around and sneaker netting files. And- clicking everything, it's more of an automated fashion, which I've taken a liking to a lot of the information coming out of that, especially for work, um, as we start to deploy more Macs. So that's that's one that I've been picking up, but unfortunately it's like once a month, once every other. Um, but they do, they do have a lot of blogs and stuff on their site as well, so I tap into that. I try to get into some gaming podcasts. Um, I, I don't know. I just couldn't. I need. I feel like I need to be in front of the computer so I can look stuff up and kind of keep up with what they're talking about or, or look for more information on a topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting. I, for me, um, I I'm really big on you know like you the Tota TV ones like like Mac Break. Uh, I actually started cycling the in the Windows Weekly and an, all about Android a little bit more because I want to be a little more kind of platform agnostic. Mm-hmm. with them um especially since uh how many operating systems are in front of me right now for instance um so i, I want to know what's going on especially as, as some of these production machines are probably going to have to uh keep rolling with windows and whatever i, I didn't even check in on the announcement today to be honest <laughs> uh whoops um but uh between that, the five by five, I like the back to work with Merlin Mann. I like the Roderick on the line. Um, I like what Tom mayer has been doing since he's departed from Twit. Uh, I follow uh, Cord Killers and uh, Daily Tech News Show. That's kind of replaced this weekend, or I'm sorry, uh, Tech News Today for me. Um, those are the big ones. Triangulation, I love. It's a great uh, uh, interview podcaster doing a Twit. Just slashed on to pack Mac Power users. Um, I I got a list, guys. <laughs> you should see my Stitcher. <laughs> um, does this hold up? Is actually a Pittsburgh local one um, where they look at old movies and say, "Does this hold up?" It's kind of uh, it's very similar to um, how does this get made by a lot of those guys that were on uh, the league. Um, Ten minute podcasts have been turned on to um, the TED Radio Hour from NPR, uh, the Smodcast stuff, especially. I've kind of uh, fell out of uh, Smodcast and uh, Jay and Silent Bob get old, but Batman on Batman, ooh, they got a new one. They haven't been regularly updating lately, but they've had like inter- these interviews with like Neil Adams and all these comic creators are just tremendous. Um, a really good listen for that. And a lot of times, like voice actors and show creators for like the Batman series or just like people that like were influenced by Batman sometimes in interesting ways. Um, a really good conversational podcast. Uh, wrestling wise, and we'll talk about this a little bit more on the Wrestling Mayhem show. 
um, Cole Cabana's Art of Wrestling, like a really good conversation with people there. Like a lot of times in indie wrestling, um, you know, kind of that idea of being independent, you know, and I like anything where anybody's being independent, you know. Um, one problem I come into is, uh, and this is another point of discussion, I think, how do you guys uh, listening to podcasts? Because for me, Stitcher is kind of where everything lives. I like that I have an app and it has everything exactly where I left off. Um, and I do have some stuff in the podcast app, but I was looking at it today and I realized how much stuff I forget about because it's not in my primary source of podcasts. Like I'm so behind on so many, like, like uh Brunchburg I have over there cause it's non-stitcher. And uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, a lot of these wrestler podcasts, like the stone cold Steve Austin's and everybody that's putting stuff out. Um, do you guys have, have, have that kind of sort of situation going on? What are you guys using? Uh, uh, Mike, let's start with you. My, my, my biggest challenge is time. Um, I, mm. I, 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 one of the great things about my new gig downtown is that it only takes me 10 minutes to get to work. Um, a, a, a challenge with that is finding time to, to listen to the stuff that I used to listen to on my, on my former 45 minute commute to work. Um, I, I've had, uh, I, I like the podcast app a lot. Um, it, it is, a, other than than me kind of manually organizing stuff, um, it's, it's sort of taken that chore away from me and uh, uh, makes that stuff easy to manage. Um, so that's uh, that's that's been a that's been a nice uh, addition. Uh, I don't I don't know how long that's uh, Apple's had that uh, available on iOS, but um, but I, but that's but I like it and I use it. It's really streamlined it because it, it was really yeah. tough to do. Like I hated how iTunes handled podcasts before. Uh, with my phone mm-hmm. so it's been yeah. a, it's been really nice to switch over uh chilla what about you so i'm i'm using the podcast app um i do like it i you know i sync stuff between devices so i can pick up where i left off um i've used dog catcher on ios which i liked at the time i haven't used it in, in quite some time i'm sure it's gotten better it probably has chromecasting and all kinds of other stuff um I started to try out Stitcher and I was like, eh, I'm, I, I don't know. I just didn't like the interface. I didn't like how it searched. Clicking on links pretty much default opens podcast, the podcast app. So I kind of ran with that. So that's kind of where I'm sitting. I'm more than willing to change. Um, I just don't have a good reason. Okay. Okay. What about you, Cindy? I am also using the podcast app and also basically because I I just don't, it's fine. It's, it works okay. I don't have enough of a need to make it something else, you know. <laughs> and it, and it does. Sometimes when I use it, I'm in the car and yeah. I'm listening, you know, and my, Mike has shortened his commute and I've lengthened mine. And so, uh, so now it becomes more important to find some ways to fill the time. Although mm-hmm. I have to say, like some people listen to podcasts when they're doing things. And I, I cannot work and listen to words. You know what I mean? That's interesting because that, that's like exclusively what I do when I'm working um, is usually is usually put on a podcast in the background, you know, like I, I absorb it. But I can't here, here's my things. I can I, I can listen to a podcast that's informational and discussion, but I can't listen to or an audiobook That's like, I don't know, a, a book about companies or the, 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 the late night wars or something. But I cannot listen to a fiction book typically doing something else like to the point like i'm afraid to listen to a fiction book while i'm driving because it doesn't really work for me you know wow we are driving that that i could do i could i could do that every time (laughs) i can't do any work uh that is non-routine so like if it was just maybe Mm -hmm. like sporting something Mm -hmm. maybe i could do that but even in the past i've like tried Sometimes I'll let my receipts pile up and I need to sort out several months of receipts or something. Mm-hmm. And even that I will get to I'll focus on the text. You know, I'm like not a multitasker, I guess. So, Interesting. so I, then I have to go and scroll back in the podcast and l- re-listen to like five minutes worth of something. Yeah. The, the only time I have to shut it off is when I'm doing like some pretty deep video work, you know, which is really, you know, only some of the time in the green scheme of things, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of organizational stuff or a lot of, okay, this goes here, this goes here. You know, I, I call it kind of editing by numbers, depending on how the script's set up. Um, but when I get an audio, I, I, I have to shut everything out. Like, I don't know if it's just because of my aptitude towards audio work, you know? Um, but I mean, that, I guess I'm using that, I'm using the audio part of the brain. So I guess that makes sense, you know, and I can't, you know, you know. Well, I was wondering when you gave your list of all the podcasts you listened to, I was wondering now, when do you sleep? 
And I guess she <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, I guess habits. Like, it's, it's, I get up in the morning, I, I put my phone on the dock, and I'm taking a shower, and I, I put it on. I'm walking around the house. Like, I walk down here to go do my morning recording. Um, I have a podcast going in my pocket on the phone as I'm going, as I'm getting ready for the show, and I'm going around doing, you know, uh, taking care of laundry, taking care of the garbage. It's in my pocket, and it's playing. Like, pretty much my nine to five if i'm around, or if i'm in the car it's on and it's playing you know doing an errand going to a gig um i know i kind of kick myself because i listen to podcasts more than i listen to music you know and i feel like partially i need to like turn off the analytical part of my brain and like just listen to music a little bit to de-stress a little but that's i enjoy the absorbing information at all times idea i guess um and it was a big thing um it, and that was a big motivation for me and maybe that's why i latched on the podcasting so much um learning what's going on out there while i really hated my day job you know um and and that was a lot of a lot of inspirations came from the things i listened to um you know in those you know at that time and it's still like a lot of those ideas kind of spark you know um i don't know if it, like it, it's kind of like because of the ones i listen to it's kind of riding my creativity as I'm working, you know, and I don't know. That's what works. That's what works for me, I guess. So, uh, so you're pretty much all audio. Is anyone watching a lot of video podcasts? Not really. Like when I'm at a point where I can, I'm happen to be working in the living room and I can Chromecast it or, or at a desk and I throw it up on a tablet. If there's a video version, but the I I know I have a hard time like following YouTube series that I like, <laughs> for instance, because just having that time because it's like, you know, I can have that podcast in the background most of the time. But when I need a video, I want a video up. Um, it takes that extra step. And it's like, ah, just go with the audio, you know. Um, I don't know. Are you, are you guys watching any uh, regularly? I, I'm not watching any regularly. I'm because I mean, I'm going to actually try to start doing a little more watching of, of video podcasts only because my primary, my prime time listening is on the train on the way to and from work, which is about 25 minutes in the morning, 25 minutes in the afternoon. So it kind of limits mm -hmm. the amount of content I can consume. Um, but I, I'm probably going to try to pick up like a shorter video podcast to watch to and from and then stick with the audio during the day throughout the day yeah i think it's more of a situational thing isn't it you know um yeah. you know again like i said i'm usually like you know kind of transferring from going up to the office going down to the studio you know setting up a render coming back down here or or, or going to a coffee shop to work for a little bit so like the video thing just it seems heavy to mm -hmm. me you know it's that extra thing like <laughs> i don't feel right sitting at a coffee shop watching a video podcast you know, like I think there's a difference between like a video blog and a video podcast, or is there a difference? I, I think it all blends together. I don't know how many, cause I, I feel like, I don't know if there's a lot of video podcasts on iTunes anymore. There, there used to be right. Like we don't, we don't even broadcast these videos on, on iTunes anymore. Uh, partially cause blip TV, uh, shut everybody out. Uh, and that killed our feed for that. And I really don't have another place in mind that I can put the videos and actually, and everybody's on YouTube anyways. Right. And these are, you know, mm -hmm. kind of big files to be hosting somewhere for somebody to try to download on their iPod. Um, so I, I think well, see, that's where I, I disagree because I I feel like so many people are like ah podcasts you listen to it live or you don't not necessarily live but to me if I need to be able to take it on the go and I don't want I don't want to have to worry about cell signal or or anything like that I want to be able to download it. Mm -hmm. I mean no I mean my phone I have sixty four gig of space. And to me, that's enough. Or I could put it on a different device that has removable media. So, I mean, for me, I, I think space isn't the issue. It's more of time to pay attention to it throughout the day. Right, right, right. But I, I think generally, like, YouTube has kind of taken place of any other kind of video delivery to mm -hmm. me, at least in what I've seen in the numbers and everything. Um, I mean, it was nice when we were able to, able to provide the videos straight to Roku. But then now there's Chromecast. You know, like there's another cheap way you can get us on the TV. Um, and again, we just have to put things in YouTube. And well, now even that we're on Roku because YouTube's on Roku. 
right? Like I don't need a gatekeeper like Blip TV anymore. Um, and it's been interesting to see what's been happening with the hosting. Um, you know, Libsyn's still around. Talk Shoe somehow still around. There's still a Block Talk Radio uh, out there, uh, but then you got guys like Spreaker with their own app, Stitcher, which you know you still have to be hosted somewhere else for Stitcher. It's really kind of riding that iTunes uh, feed to a certain point, um, or at least the RSS feed from it. Um, but uh, it, are we surprised to see that podcasting still going on today? Or it really seems like it's done a resurgence now that uh, it seems like everybody, like your ESPNs, your NPRs, of course, they're, they're re- rebroadcasting uh, radio content. Um, but now you got your Adam Carollas, now you got your Kevin Smiths, and you still got little guys like us. You know, uh, I think part of it, and I, I wonder if part of it is. Oh. I think we lost her. Um, uh, Chilla, Chilla, what do you think about the landscape? I, I think it's only going to get bigger. I think as. Data usage on phones goes up, and, and I think it was AT and T. It was AT and T this week announced that they're for everybody that's on a, a larger plan, and it's like the 15 gig plan and up. They're all getting double um, the bandwidth. Really? So if you're on a, yeah. If you're on a 15 gig plan with AT and T, I think they're gonna they're, they're doubling it. So all those 15 gig users get 30 gig. Um, I almost see it as, and, and Wi-Fi becomes more more spread. Last week we talked about, you know, mesh networking and things of that nature. I don't, I see almost this replacing, to me, it's going to replace the radio in a lot of ways because I can get something on demand that I want to listen to. Um, I find myself very rarely do I want to even listen to the radio? I'd rather throw on a podcast or throw on a playlist or throw on something else. I, I really, I, I think it's only going to to evolve and go further. I think we got Cindy back there. I think we lost you at the beginning of your point there. <laughs> I've been dropping in and out. You guys sound good though. Okay. Are right, you want to go ahead with what you're about to say? Sure. Uh, I, I, maybe you said this while I was out. I think part of what's helping is that uh, the newer cars have Bluetooth. Uh, did you already talk about this? No. Making, no. making it much easier to consume the stuff, you know, exactly while you're, you know, com- commuting. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big thing. Um, I know we've been playing with that a bit with the new car uh, on our end. Um, but yeah, that's, that's definitely, I mean, hell, we got like Pandora. I think Stitcher actually has a, a app built in. Uh, we've talked about like the the uh, Android and the the iTunes or the uh, iOS uh, kind of uh, integrations that are happening in stereos these days. So, yeah, my thinking is that you know the as the audience continues to grow, as people try to find things to listen to as they're driving around, when the audience grows, then the people are saying you know the different you know, content providers are saying, well, oh, maybe it will be worth us you know repurposing some content that we've got anywhere and trying to make some money off it or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and, and you kind of see... Um, what, sorry? My background. I'm in and out. Okay. <laughs> and, chill, <laughs> and, 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 you guys are, and you guys are both kind of leaning towards that, you know, what we do in our car versus the radio. And I think you kind of see that with, uh, you know, some movements like the iHeartRadio that's been going on. How much are they pushing you towards that app these days? You know, I mean, we're seeing, you know, you know, friends of ours and Mikey and Big Bob, how they've moved to have their own channel on there. You know, now I can, I, you know, I, it's always been like, man, I'd like to listen to them, but I'm not going to listen to all that other Miley Cyrus how many times in the morning or, or whatever um, just to get those few <laughs> clips. But it's nice because you can get through. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mike, are you a Miley Cyrus? No, that's, that's, what I've, that's what I've told Mikey and Bob for years. It's like, I, I would love to listen to you guys, but I, God, the music is just brutal. <laughs> you I just cannot, can't do it. Just can't I do it. I cannot do it. I can't listen to Birthday for the 100th time. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it's almost like the same song comes on at oh, the same I, I, exact time. The, like the, the, the iHeart Radio thing is, is an excellent point. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I mean, I can go and uh, they'll serve me their clear channel or actually they just changed their names. I, I think it's iHeart. Um, yeah. aren't, they, aren't they calling themselves iHeart radio or something now? Like that is like the name of the company from That's clear close, channel. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but I can go, they can serve me whatever their ads are. Uh, but I can get what I want from it. You know, it's kind of like the TV. It, it, it's kind of like iHeart radio, uh, created their own Hulu for their content. 
much like we're having on TV. I mean, we watch all of our stuff. Even though I have free over-the-air TV, I'm paying for Hulu so I can w- go watch Arrow whenever the heck I want to, you know, or catch up on whatever. Um, and, and I think that's kind of what they've done. And I think to a very, I don't know what the numbers are like, but they got to be doing really good with it, you know. Um, actually, a recent uh, conversation I heard about, like, why do they have FM on the radio stations anymore? It's not really FM anymore if you can get on 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 this thing, you know. So and you can hit, and, and, and we can listen to Party Pod even when we're going on a road trip over Memorial Holiday. So, <laughs> what's what's Party Pod? You don't know Party Pod? Party no. Pod is maybe the greatest thing on radio. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I had some articles in here, uh, you know, just kind of looking, you know, there's, there's a few things coming up, uh, you know, in the conversation. Um, oh, I didn't see this one. Uh, but, uh, like podcast, like there's a Washington post article last week, podcasts are back and they're making money. Uh, in, in this example, we're talking about, uh, uh, some guys that did, uh, let's find the name of it. Um, but they talked to the, uh, a member of Raw Voice, and uh, these guys, you know, they had a ro- radio show, and uh, uh, you know, uh, went from podcasting to that. Uh, my argument for that is, it seems like the people making, like the stories you hear about people making money from podcasts, you're hearing about Kevin Smith. He made a movie. We were just talking about this on Movie Minute. His latest movie is because of a podcast. Like they came up with the concept and were able to pitch it, and he's made a movie. I think he said they were they were filming six months later. Uh, for his own low budget independent movie, um, uh, but but he's obviously kind of built built a, a business around that. You know, he spun off shows like Comic Book Men happens it ha- happened because it was based on a podcast with those guys on that show, um, and now they're on AMC. Uh, how much you know? Do you see a lot of people coming up that aren't already in a television or radio business? Um, you know, kind of making making it at podcasting, I guess. There's the example of, um, you know, Mark Marin on WTF. Mm-hmm. And so he had a whole career that was kind of not doing well. I mean, he was literally broke and suicidal. Yeah, I think we lost her again. <laughs> but she's right. Mark Marin's another guy that, that uh, uh, you know, kind of had at least a little bit of fame. Like, he was still a name. And I think that's another part is... is um, you know, uh, one idea is having those thousand true followers. You can you can do about anything. Uh, they talked about on Nerdist with um, you know with Kevin Smith this week. Um, Cindy, are you back there? I'm here. I okay. can, apparently I'm only allowed to speak for ten seconds. So okay. I'm keep all my. <laughs> <laughs> Am I along the right line there with Mark Marin? You are per- you are great. Actually, I'll just from now on I'm just going to say a name and then you can take it from and there. And I'll take it from there. We'll tag team this for sure. Um, but I mean, do you see that? Do, are there are there, like like one big thing I'm into is Twit, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh, this week in tech, it's from Leo Laporte that did uh, uh, Tech TV, and he moved on from there. And, and he's like, well, I'm going to build my own thing, start with his podcast, or bring other people from Tech TV. You know, are, are people from CNET people already basically in the industry and doing this for other avenues, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it seems like that's. Five by five, I think, is the only thing that's a very successful thing. There, he didn't have previous podcasting success, but he brings in a lot of personalities that do. You know, he's got the Andy Nakos and the and the Merlin Mans that already have like blogging or writing success or or on other podcasts, for instance. Um, but I mean, is there is there a, a path for people that that are just kind of grassroots like us? I, there's got to be. I mean, I, I mentioned the um, the, the uh, Men in Blazers podcast, and and, and they have they, they had benefit of connections that that you and I don't have. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the gentlemen was a was a producer at ESPN, um, so he's he is you know he he's he's already in the building, but but he's he's totally behind the scenes guy. The other guy is a writer. Um, again, you 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 have these connections, but what what they what they built wasn't on the air, wasn't on any of the ESPN networks. It was something that was uh, done on, on ESPN's websites uh, initially. Um, and then what, what happened with them after the, the World Cup was, was over the summer, uh, they jumped to NBC because NBC has the, the American rights to, to um, uh, the major in- oh. league. Uh, so they, they uh, go around it. Up on Sunday, um, lost you there for a and second. And they started with just 
a, 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 an hour an hour long podcast. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I have some kind of uh, something weird going on here. Um, speaking of podcasting being hard, <laughs> <laughs> well, how did so Chris Hardwick with Nerdist? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's gone. He's to me has gone extremely far with that. And, and yes, he had he had a stand up comedy, and, and I, I can't really attribute his start in podcasting or even getting a following from uh, what was the game show he was on on MTV? Singled out. Singled out. He was in singled I out. I can't really picture that he had a huge following from his singled out days. No, no. And the biggest, um, and he's explained several remember. times on the podcast. He, he, it started as his own blog, and he was mm -hmm. like, "This is the stuff I'm into. Maybe some other people are into it." And he really did it. And he says he's very lucky because he got in the right time where the pop culture is like the in thing now. Um, and he kind of rode that wave along with it. Plus, it doesn't it doesn't hurt that he is in Hollywood and has a lot of. Uh, Hollywood connections. He grew up with Will Wheaton. I mean, he's Will yeah. Wheaton's best yeah. friend. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there, there, there's enough there. And again, that whole kind of nerd uprising that's happened over the last few years in pop culture definitely helps with that. Um, but is again a guy in the right place at the right time with Hollywood, I think. Um, but 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 still, you look at him, look at a Kevin Smith. Even though they they do have that previous thing, it is it is great to see that they have. You know, well, we weren't doing we weren't happy with the part we were doing in the system of Hollywood and, and television or whatever the case may be. Um, but they were able to create this kind of outside the box, you know, and something independent, you know, to the point where now Chris Hardwick is like, hey, you know, uh, half the people that go on his podcast are like Tom Hanks and stuff. And they're like, man, you're everywhere. You know, they're telling him that he's everywhere. And he's just this lowly podcast guy that uh, that may host every after show possible on cable these days <laughs> <laughs> for instance but you know it's still a testament even if it is something that um you know it's somebody that did have a little bit of fame and i, and I think that matters a little bit like i, I think kevin smith automatically has a sh you know a, sh a foot in the door when he says hey i'm kevin smith you know of all my movies and uh even though you're not enough people for uh hollywood to be happy with the numbers uh it's plenty of people for a podcast guys you know, and and it, it, what do we talk? What have we been talking about since PodCamp one? You know, um, and there's been eight of them. Uh, it was it 2006? We first started having these discussions. It's finding that niche, and I think these are the guys that are like, you know, finding their uber niche in like a Hollywood that doesn't want to take risks. You know, and now they're coming back around again and making their own movies. You know, so I mean, it's it, it's it's it's. It's uh, it's inspirational, you know, but, you know, I, I think, you know, you got to watch the just because Kevin Smith can do it doesn't doesn't mean everybody can do what Kevin Smith does, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. Well, I, I would agree with that to a point, but I think anything I mean, the the the, the cost barrier is is continually dropping. Yeah, so, for sure. So a barrier to entry. I mean, yes, I, I, I think you're right. You have to have your niche. Yeah, yeah, you have to. It's it. I think it's a lot of word of mouth still. It's not like Kevin Smith needs to necessarily advertise, but anybody can go out there. I don't know if you went to Kevin Smith's last uh, an evening with Kevin Smith, but that's that would that's what his point was. You know, find something you like and go do a podcast and get some experience under your belt doing that. And it doesn't take much more than that to to make a movie and and, and, and go self publish that. I think also it needs to be uh, expectations too. Like not everybody makes podcasts is like, I'm going to get a show on comedy central. Like some of these guys, like, right. the, like uh, I am, I feel very fortunate for me. Like, Hey, you guys, I more or less are friends because I, I podcast and I met a bunch of cool people, <clears throat> podcast, you know, and, uh, and I share that every week when I'm like, why do I still do this on Tuesday nights? And that's exactly why, you know, <laughs> I mean, um, I mean, how much did the did the guy making potato salad on Kickstarter end up with? Let's not get started on the <laughs> the, the chachis in the chat room, and the obscenities are about to start flying. Um, but, but I mean, that's my point: is that the barrier to entry is low, and you find something. I, I think that's something that businesses get lost in, and they want to create this viral video, or they want to create something like yeah, that. There, there's is. there's no there's no recipe for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just kind of serendipity, but um, serendipity is not a good business plan. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good business plan, but I, I think that's the, the trick behind 
viral videos. I don't think there's a magical formula to it. Personally, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure someone who has data that can prove me wrong. But the point being is the barrier entry is low, and anybody can kind of do anything they want in that area. Exactly. It's 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 easier to do this well these days, also, mm -hmm. and that's that that's something that that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, the, the the tools are better. It is easier to make something that looks better and sounds better. Um, and Mike, Mike, I know you know what what you have done in the time that you've been doing your shows um, has changed dramatically. You could you could address that better than I could, but uh, but it, it's easily it's it is much easier these days to do a nice job with these than it, than it was when uh, when we were all getting started. Dude, every time I look at Hangouts and then I look at all the hardware lying around here, I'm just like. Man, I can just be kind of, we actually do do several shows on this network just with Hangout exclusively. Mm -hmm. Like we do the Hangout and, and, and a lot of it's access too. one of the nice things is you can do that. And, and several guys that don't have all this equipment, they have their laptop and they have their headsets. And one, I'm saying a new headset because my God, we need to fix that. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that's all you need. I doubt it's on YouTube. It, I can download it, put it in a podcast feed. It sounds pretty good, guys. You know, mm -hmm. uh, and and there you go. Yeah, we're do, uh, with a client. That's what we're doing to bring you know get them re get them a place where they can record with minimal equipment. They have a snowball microphone and a pretty good Logitech uh, webcam, better than the ones I have here in the studio because uh, I don't have a budget. You know, I can't pay for it with pizza. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but, uh, you know, th that accessibility has been has been tremendous. And uh, YouTube's really pushing that for the video side, at least. Plus, any of your blog talk radios and speakers that will now live broadcast and everything. I mean, I remember uh, having a, uh, the server, you know, that'd be sitting beside me that ran Shoutcast that I could get 15 people listening at the same time before uh, I started choking my Comcast connection. Right. Um, I mean, that's, you know, the right tools, you know, you, you can get out there on a YouTube live, you can get out there on any of those live and, and, and get out to everybody, you know, it, it's, it's really nice. Uh, Cindy, you had a, a, a link in here to the business of podcasts. Do you want to mention anything about that? Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can hear me very well. So I've switched over to my AT&T phone to try and take uh, use of that bandwidth increase. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see if that hangs in there a little better. So, um, but yeah, so transom.org is something I, I had discovered years ago through, I think through This American Life. They, um, they are really based from, you know, they take things from the sort of public radio standpoint, like how to create stories for public radio. But the podcasting is just effectively the same thing now as radio in many ways. So it's a great resource for information on what's good equipment. They do a lot of tech reviews of equipment and software, all kinds of good things. And so they just, um, I think a couple weeks ago, published this article, The Business of Podcasts, that if you're not familiar or haven't really thought about how to promote a podcast, how to run it as a business, it's a really great rundown. Awesome. I'll take a look at that because I always, I always know that I'm missing. I'm missing a piece of the puzzle, you know. Um, unfortunately, I show up at least, right? Uh <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, and looking through the list, I think you'll see that you're you're doing all the right things. And and you know, as we talk about here, you know, what's how do people make these big successes? There's no overnight successes. Like no. everybody that we've talked about tonight has been working at it for years and years. I, I you know, I think about the you know John and Hank Green um, from the Vlog Brothers who started out just doing you know video show back and forth at each other. And now John Green spent a couple weeks with, um, you know, who's the Microsoft guy? Who is the Microsoft guy? What, 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 the current Microsoft guy? The current one? No, the, the first one. The, the Bill Gates? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Spent a week with Bill Gates over in um, uh, looking at how water, you know, in, in third world countries can be made better, how to get rid of malaria. Yeah. I mean, this, this video, YouTube video guy is, you know, being tapped to, to talk about charitable causes. And it's all just because of posting every goddamn day, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm, I've definitely cranked that up lately. <laughs> I feel bad that I couldn't remember Bill Gates' name, but um, he'll probably take it as an insult. But, hope, you know, hopefully someday he'll hear this and feel bad. Oh, I'm sure he's a regular <laughs> listener. I'm sure he's a regular listener. I think he's um, regular. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's National Podcast Day. Share it with your friends. Or if you're afterwards... Just generally, just just share podcasting. I, I was kind of having fun today. I say, hey, explain podcasting to your grandmother. 
or or even better if you do podcasting explain it to your grandmother i love i don't know how many times i went to re- visit my grandfather who's uh around the 80, 85 mark i know um and explain so and i don't and i think this is just a general question he's like so what do you do again <laughs> <laughs> but your grandparents, your grandparents are going to understand this better than your than your than your parents will, or or someone or someone who didn't grow up with radio. Okay, that's I, 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 I there's enough of podcasting that is what radio was in the 30s and 40s and and even into the 50s. Um, I, I bet you know that it, 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 personal experiences aside, I bet it's it as a rule, grandparents are going to understand this better than than parents might even. I, hmm. I actually definitely agree with that. When I talk to my grandfather about about things like podcasting or I, just basic audio and iTunes and, mm-hmm. and things, like, things of that nature, he mm-hmm. is so much more interested in talking about that than my mom, dad, or even some of my siblings are because that was his. I mean, he had a record collection. Yeah. He, his his yeah. one of one of his hobbies is taking his old records and converting them to mp3 I, like he lives in that audio world i mean i, I can remember mm-hmm. the radio that sat in the kitchen had am fm and then like the vhf or whatever and you could actually tune yes. in local tv in just the audio uh-huh. form wow and, and that's how i mean i that's how they listen to like the baseball game so, and so things of that nature. That's kind of like how I listen to the audio feed for Twit, even though they have a video version, or how may listen to the audio feed of this, even though I have a video version. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. And, you know, and actually, and my grandfather again, you know, eighty in his eighties, uh, he's doing computers. <laughs> he's figuring it out, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but I think he's got a good mind for it because he was an electrician uh, uh, all his life. Um, but you know, he is taking uh uh found the software that that converts his sheet music to digital and it'll play the music so they so his choir his church choir can practice and he sends them the uh well i guess the problem was they were wmas at the time but we got them on a mac now so it's not as much big of a problem <laughs> um, but still like the, oh, that's awesome i mean he the biggest issues we talk about here is like when like he like clicked the wrong thing and he got hacked you know, or, 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 you know, malware or, 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 or the Indians call him and say that they, he needs to pay them to unlock his computer. Um, scary stuff there. But I mean, but, but still like he's figuring out the, this is how I do this thing. He's still doing his quick books on it, you know, or quick or whatever it is for his finances. You know, I mean, he's involved again, more than my dad, you know, which amazes me. <laughs> so, so maybe there is that little, little, little jump being demonstrated there so well uh we talked about podcasting a good bit here uh let's uh, uh give a shout to our, our sponsor and then uh we'll get to the rest of the awesome things. i think it's just gonna be awesome things did anything happen with microsoft today do we need to talk about that oh no no did, 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 did you hear about something nine? Nine, windows nine? Oh, we'll get to that we'll get to that no, that's a teaser actually, no that's a teaser um <laughs> <laughs> no let's give a shout out to our I'm friends sure, i sure missed windows nine I don't okay i miss windows xp that's what, that's what crappy's running on over there that's why we're having problems <laughs> um give a shout out to our friends over at slice on broadway you saw us tweeting from the mayhem show account earlier in this evening hey uh they hook us up for our in-studio guests even though you guys are all here digital crappy you're coming in sometime you're coming in sometime i know soon, i know man. i know <laughs> Uh, but go check them out there if you're in the South Hills of Pittsburgh here. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com. They're uh, right here on Broadway in uh, in Beachview along the tracks. If you take the T home, like Chilla does, you pass it every day, mm-hmm. twice. Um, that would be hard. Start off some sometimes breakfast. and say, I hard. stopped off. And I'm going to have some slice for breakfast because they talked about it on the <laughs> awesome cast. <laughs> and I know they a lot of good eat. breakfast pizza. They should. Oh, that'd be little, great. Little bacon, sausage, and egg. You just tweet them. Tweet them that. Slice, uh, I believe, slice underscore PGH. Um, they could call it the Brenner. <laughs> <laughs> I think they accept the ideas. They experiment a lot. They do experiment a lot. I've seen it on their Facebook page. And they also have a great new location that I believe we're checking out this week. We still have the Pizza Pals uh, out here, uh, meetups. Um, and uh, that's gonna, that's out in Carnegie down on Main Street, um, which confuses me because it's not on Broadway at that point but that's okay uh so <laughs> we're gonna be checking that out go check them out uh uh sliceonbroadway.com 
So who's got an awesome thing of the week that's not podcasting? Um, Cindy? I have, well, it's, it's probably cool. I guess I should have asked my thing. Anyway, um, the folks that the blog brother guys, um, have, they call their followers nerd fighters and they've created a thing called the nerd fighter online video workshop to help people learn how to make better online videos. So they're not boring and don't have huge gaps of, you know, and they don't ramble in much the way I'm doing right now. Anyway, so th- what I enjoyed most from it is sort of counterintuitive. I enjoyed watching a one how one hour video of Hank Green editing um, himself down to four minutes of video. And it was fascinating. Ooh. It was fascinating to me to figure out, to understand how he's using um, Final Cut and how he makes his cuts and sort of philosophies of how, what to keep in, what to put out. It was great. Interesting. Interesting. I, I noticed he's still back on Final Cut 7. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you would know. Oh, you never would mind. Never mind. This video is from 2011. So that actually makes sense. But it was just, it's just really interesting. And, and you don't really get to see that sort of the, you know, the, the behind the scenes of how you make sausage for, for a lot of stuff. Everything just looks brilliant. And this is a nice example of how you could learn how brilliant comes from crappy. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Any. Yeah. And and again, kind of to the doing it uh, for a while there. Like any video out there, especially these YouTube ones. Um, it, it's not just if you're just sitting there in front of a webcam and you put it out and hope somebody listens. Like it needs to be a little more than that. You know. Uh, I know one thing. I spoke. I spoke of those hangout ones before. These guys were doing like forty minute talks about like after uh, after a wrestling show on Thursday nights, and I'm like, and amazingly they were getting them. Great hits, uh, but you're, you know, nobody's sticking around for that. And they really penalize you if you have like a uh, hundred people went and got to your thing because they got the right search uh, uh, and, and landed on your video. But if they don't stick around for more than a minute, then it's not really worthwhile. And and, and uh, YouTube won't float you, you know, any more than that. Um, so, it, 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 yeah, there's a good bit of philosophy. Uh, I, I bookmarked it myself to kind of see uh, what they have going on there. Uh, so looking forward to that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Chilla, how about you? So my thing is uh, Microsoft made an announcement today. What? Windows 10 is coming in 2015. What? <laughs> yes. wait, 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 wait. Didn't we have an issue when they went to Windows 7 that it wasn't actually Windows 7? Like, I was it, was it actually like version 8 when they did 7? Yeah. So are they sure. correcting? I I don't know how, like I've heard different stories from different people that claim they know people that worked on the development that said internally it was not only codenamed Threshold, it was codenamed Windows Nine. I don't I didn't I didn't see video from today's announcement, and I don't know if there is public video available. Um, but. Yeah, they're they're skipping nine and going to ten. Jeez. They they from from one thing, um, people some people say they want to really distance themselves from what Windows eight is by a whole version number. Yes, I've heard stories that Windows ten, and this sounds like someone that read some Apple article and, and then translated it to Microsoft, but. Some people are claiming that Windows 10 will be the last version of Windows before they go to monthly and quarterly updates, and we're going to see the the Mac OS 10, 10.1, 10.2, all the way up the line. Um, so I guess only time will tell what we see. Um, I think Microsoft will have a hard time getting their user population to understand if they just go to, to point releases, I don't know if, if how that would work for them. Um, I guess I guess like I said, only only time will tell. I I thought personally they should just drop the version number from the name, give it a version behind the scenes, but just call it Windows. Mm-hmm. And I thought that I thought we would have saw a a more Everything will run Windows, your phone, your tablet, your your desktop, your laptop, etc. And they would just play the Windows name and, and kind of phase out versioning. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, they're, they're claiming technical preview will be available potentially even within the next couple of days. Wow. Wow. I ran, I ran technical preview for eight. Um, I thought it was pretty darn solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've had, they've had plenty of time to work on this. Um, <gasps> I think next year is going to be a big year for Microsoft. I think we're going to see touch-friendly Office. We're going to see a Mac, potentially a Mac um, Office version. You're going to see a new version of Windows. Um, you'll probably see some more Surfaces, Surfi, Surfi, or whatever, Maybe. whatever the plural. Of Surfi, that is. Yeah. Surfi. You'll see more Surfi. So we got uh, we got a writer here. He can he can verify that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, I'm I'm interested to see. Uh, obviously they're bringing the start menu back. Mm-hmm. Um, the charms seem to kind of, they're there, but they're kind of hidden. Um, the start menu actually has a bit of that modern UI in it. Um, I hope, I hope it launches better than windows eight did with a lot <laughs> less confusion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, I, we, one thing we, we were saying about the, the kind of rollover, uh, the, the, the point release kind of idea, I'm wondering, um, you know, what are the numbers for how many people uploaded online, or I'm sorry, updated, up, upgraded online, for mm-hmm. instance. I also uh, uh, something around this, and I don't know if any, probably nothing was announced with it uh, here. I didn't see any big headlines about it, uh, but they're also wondering that uh, you know, Windows may be free for a lot of users, like probably not enterprise, but a lot of regular users, I guess. Um, so that that would be an interesting play, and especially since they're kind of it's supposed to be a shift away from them doing uh, being reliant on Windows as a as their money maker, I guess. But uh, what I want to know is when are they going to update Office for Mac? <laughs> well, I think that, well, I think we're going to see that next year. I hope so because I mean that's how, a that's a how big, long has it been? It's been uh, 2011. 2011, a version twenty eleven of okay. whatever that actually lands. Okay. Like I don't recall for them, so. Um, but it's been, and we saw, so we saw OneNote this year, um, re, redone for Mac OS and it's in the, it's in the app store. Um, we saw the, um, Word, PowerPoint and Excel launch for the iPad. Um, we saw kind of an office for phone devices. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I've heard that team, that the, the same team that built a de- Oh, excuse me. The iPad version built that from the ground up, and I think they're working on porting that to Mac. Um, is, is some of the rumors I've heard. Have but, you looked at how good is Office on the iPad? It's not. I'm going to say it's not. It's definitely not bad. Yeah. Um, if you're familiar with the newer versions of Word and the ribbon and everything like that, um, it, it's it's really nice um I'm, I'm impressed with some of the stuff they did they realized the use cases so, you know i we're, we're, thought about we're it. in the market uh, uh in this household for uh, somebody that that really is in the office and needs to have office um and moving to mac and i'm wondering if just a keyboard with an ipad may be enough well and so to, to unlock the full potential of office on the ipad you do have to be a 365 customer mm-hmm. um so that there is that you do have to have a subscription, and that's where I'm wondering um, if if Windows if, are, are we going to see your Windows upgrade is bundled in Office 365. So if you're hmm. an Office 365 subscriber, maybe that's one more. That's reason. a hell of a value add. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think I mean, that'll. I, that'll you never know. Who knows what they're going to try to pull? That'll be um, easier than trying to make all those people with Windows try to subscribe to it. So I think that's going to be a tough sell for the like the layman computer user. Mm-hmm. I mean, you thought Windows XP was bad. People are going to be latching on to like Windows 8 or 10 or whatever the last version was before they did that forever. One of the cool things that I, that I saw on like the PowerPoint for iPad, they realized that people are using it for presentations. So there's a laser pointer in the app. So when you're presenting, you actually tap this laser pointer pointer tool and you drag your finger around the screen and it doesn't make any changes to the slides but it allows you to point and highlight um what you're looking at and what you're presenting Hmm. which i i think is 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 really nice they understood the use case by design 
good. And I think that's. I think you can even you can use the the apps to open. You can't edit if you're not a subscriber. And I think yes. that laser pointer is is in like the free, non subscribed nice. version. Nice, nice. Yeah, it is nice that they do have a that kind of open. So so I I can access Word documents. You know, other than I know Drive kind of doesn't. Google Drive does it now too. Um, so if somebody sends me that on my a phone i can just like open up their office app even on there and just check it out so that's mm-hmm. real cool um and gets you in the ecosystem it's real smart on their part I'm, I'm actually trying to decide where i have yet to invest in like an online storage type thing mm-hmm. and so do i pay for some google drive space do I pay for some Dropbox space, which seems to be the most expensive, but has the best to me synchronization? They got cheaper. I think they're on par now. Okay. Do I pay for Apple because their prices went down to, to kind of match up with Google? Um, Microsoft just doubled their free space and their maximum file sizes. I think you can now store a single 10, 10 gig file on Drive. Thanks. Um, so if you want to pass large video around or things, that's that a problem nature. for me. That's still a problem for me sometimes. Okay. Like, well, be well, they're, getting <laughs> is um, it, they're getting there. They're getting there, but that's still an issue for video professionals. I can tell so you yeah. Give them another couple of years. Or... Yeah. Yeah. You know, we got to pass around those 4k videos. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> but, but I'm wondering, so I'm wondering is for the, for the price of the space, is it that much? I'd really like to see Microsoft hit, I get my OS subscription, my Office subscription. With you want all one. one. You want space. you want you want the like Adobe Creative Cloud maxi plan of of Microsoft stuff. Exactly, and throw in my X. So if they threw in my Xbox Live, <laughs> okay, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I might actually run a virtual machine of Windows on my Mac. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, side note: uh, speaking of cloudy. Uh, things I, I heard today. Um, uh, Photoshop, Adobe's doing a version of Photoshop that's going to be in the cloud that you can use. It'll stream the app to a Chromebook. Yeah, and you have access to it if you have the educational Adobe Cloud thing that I got rid of three months ago. So, and I heard that's the only people <laughs> that are allowed to use it in its beta form is that yes. is that group. Yes, but I'm guessing it's going to go out to everyone, and that's what I'm wondering. Are we going to see? This is where Microsoft's going to be stuck. So. Android and Chrome, there's no cost to an OS upgrade. Mm-hmm. Mac, there's no cost to an OS upgrade. So Linux never. Linux has never had a cost. So, and and how many people? This is this is where you you fall into that. Well, I can call Microsoft for help and support. <laughs> people with a home computer, I've never heard them say, yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't use this thumb driver. I couldn't use whatever, and I called Microsoft, and they helped me. Um, I hear people say that with with Apple products. I hear that. I hear people saying I took my device into into Best Buy. Um, but what what are you actually when you pay the? I mean, they call it an Apple tax for their hardware and, and software. What do you get for the Microsoft tax of of their operating system? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think now they're they're even reducing the price of the license for the the resellers if the if the device is under a certain cost. Um, like if a laptop, your one hundred ninety nine dollar PCs and laptops, the it, it's free. There's no cost for the OS license for their phones, which there originally was. That used to be the most expensive part of creating a PC for for Dell for for a lot of their normal average PCs was the cost of the Windows license. We'll see. Hey, Crappy, uh, what uh, uh, you're blank here? Do you do you not have an awesome thing? Oh, no, my awesome thing of the week was going to be that um, presumably there are there are thousands of, of of smart people in in large buildings in in Redmond, Washington, and in how the entire Microsoft Corporation forgot how to count. Um, <laughs> I, and and I get and I get why. Um, uh, she'll you know kind of mention mentioned the, the fact that they're, they're trying to put some distance between uh, whatever the next version of Windows is um, and and the disaster that was that was Windows 8 although I, I still don't think Windows 8 was a was a terrible operating system um, and and I, I know because you're curious that's that's what's 
that's what's on here right now. Um, I, I'm 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 curious of this I, I, as my my usual point of view is more from a consumer standpoint and, and what what it's going to mean. Um, I saw a couple interesting looking pictures. The you know like the uh, uh, the the the, uh, the startup uh, the, the start uh, menu kind of uh, blend of old and and some Windows eight tiles. Uh, I'm, I'm curious of how that's going to go. Um, but but yeah, I I I, I think uh, uh, putting some dif distance between uh, what what was just it was just a P public relations problem. I don't I don't think that was a, that was a bad operating system. I, I think it was a um, PR issue, but, and I think but, it was timing. And I yeah. also, I yeah. also, I think it was an introduction issue. They didn't ease people into it. They're like, "Here's all these new features. Figure it out." But I, but I think, yeah. I think what they thought was that everyone. I mean, obviously, it takes it takes over a year to develop, to develop this operating system. Based on their life cycles, it's over a year to develop. I think they honestly thought everybody would have, would have already had touch screens in their laptops, on their home PCs, wherever. And and people were would have been complaining by that point of Windows 7 and its interface, and it's, you couldn't use touch on it. It didn't mm -hmm. work right. I think they were. I think they were a a year and a half ahead of where they needed to be, unfortunately, and they needed yeah, to think about that when it, when it when they actually launched. Huh? Because the charms bar, if you're touching your screen, makes total sense. If you have a mouse, you'll never find it. Mm -hmm. But every app needs to use it. Yeah. 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 I, and again, I think it's that introductory thing too. Um, like when I loaded 8.1 on some of these machines, I got all the tutorial, tutorials telling me how to use Windows 8. I didn't get it when I installed Windows 8. <laughs> like it, it just wasn't there. And I think that was a huge, huge mistake. Every time you update uh, 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 um, iOS, I'm sorry, not iOS. Well, iOS helps you a bit too, and even more so with mm -hmm. the new Tips app. Yes. Um, especially with seven or, you know, you did the thing for spotlight and it's like, Oh, oh no, you do it this way now. You know, um, I mean, some stuff you have to find, but still the major stuff is it, it, they give you enough tips. Um, and I think they've been pretty okay with that. Like when they did, a uh, the OS X release where they changed which way the mouse scroll goes. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Remember those days? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> like, like the first time you do it, it actually, I think it actually pulled up a screen and they're really good with like, you know, when you go into the mouse settings, they show you what the motions are. They're very demonstrative with that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, now with a MacBook, it's fluid, you know, so much that the gestures I do on here have been clumsily adopted to all the PC laptops that I've, I've touched since. Right. What, what, what I think is going to be interesting is so BlackBerry of BB10 devices, Mac OS version 10, Windows version 10. Is everyone just going to go to version 10 and we're going to call it? Everybody's on parity now, you know? <laughs> it used to be if I said I got a Pentium 1, 2, 3, I know it's the better one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Versus right. a AMD K6 and K6 II, you know? I was like, oh, it's like the Pentium 2 of K6s, right? Or, you know? or are we going to see, is everyone now going to jump to the Google methodology of every time we come out with a minor patch release? Pretty much, we're just gonna increment the version number. Do we? Oh, if anybody, if anybody's taking cues from anybody, it does not to be need to be Google in this case. <laughs> I mean, Chrome's on version thirty-seven. <laughs> hey, it makes it sound more mature than Windows. Yeah. What twelve? And, and it worked. I think that's how they actually overcame. But the thing is, the nobody Firefox sees that. Users, nobody sees that. I, I have not. See, it's really on thirty now. <laughs> Because I thought twenty five was the last one I remember. Oh, you know, no, I don't. I think, but it's not. I'm, on, I'm running stable release. Thirty seven on version thirty seven dot zero dot crazy oh six two dot one two four. That's what I got. That's what I got. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what Firefox like. Firefox, whenever it updates, is like we've got a new version of Firefox, and here it is, and here's the giant new flash screen. And here's what's new. You don't get that with Chrome. They're like, yeah, don't worry, we got we got new. I mean, even Facebook on iOS now, they're they're like, we're going to release monthly, and and they they actually they have they're incrementing their version number monthly. Oh jeez, like, really? Do we really need in twelve months to increase? They by kind of versions? they kind of missed the, the what the message was. What, what <laughs> happens when you hit ninety nine? 
Yeah. Are we going to hit a version 100 or do we loop back over to one? Alpha numerical. <laughs> That's where we go. Like OS X. Are we uh, here in Explorer A? You're um, assuming Facebook will be around all that long. They are. There's, there is that. No, Facebook, no, Facebook will be providing the provider of the Oculus Rift that we'll be all wearing <laughs> while we're driving our automatic cars. Um, and uh, I don't know. Take that wherever you want from there. Guys, I, I love that it's been all awesome things this episode. <laughs> um, and Windows 10. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Let me see if there's anything. Oh, uh, real quick. App of the week, tip of the week. Chill. I, I imagine these are both you. So those are, yeah, those are both me. Um, Star Wars Commander, if you like tower defense games, it, it's actually pretty good with cross-platform Android, yeah, iOS, Windows. I kind of picked it up. Windows. I started playing it about a week ago. Yeah, everyone that I know is like addicted to it, so I've, it's, I've started it playing. It reminds, you know, I started playing because like, oh, this looks like a Warcraft kind of game, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of more Warcraft meets uh, Tapped Out, unfortunately. Yeah. So um, I don't know, like, I don't know. We'll see. Like, I just got a message that I got attacked today. I haven't played it for like two days. So I'm like, oh, is that how we're going to play it? Is it going to be like um, um, Godfinger where I come back in like a month and my entire planet is just dust? Thankfully, well, I'm on ta- the cool. The cool thing, too, is that it's kind of like Clash of Clans as well, where you can partner buddy up. Yeah. Yeah. So after you get enough credits or whatever, you can you can start a clan or, or you can join a clan. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. It looks pretty I, I'm, I'm right? going to stick with Supercard. I want to stick with WWE Supercard. I I, (laughs) have too much time invested in that one. Um, Awesome. Uh, And and your tip, sir? So, and I didn't realize this till my cousin. I had some families visit not too long ago, Um, and they were taking pictures of Christopher. And I'm like, oh, can you email those to me? And, And my cousin's like, I'll just share you the album. So she went in to the album on her iPhone. And just shared it right to my email address, which then Apple picked up on the fact that I'm an iPhone user under that email address. And then now I got a notification on all my devices that, hey, you have a, a, um, an album shared with you. And it has it has video in it. It has all the pictures she took while she was here. I, I, I never realized that was there. Maybe it's I'm behind the times. I don't know. I was used to, oh, let me upload that to Facebook and share the album over Facebook and, and share it to non-Facebook users and then create this special URL and blah, 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 blah. Now it's if you if you can text the person or email them, you can share the album right from your phone. Yes. What if they don't want it? <laughs> there's, there's that. I can yes. go in. I think I can go in. Here's all my private pictures. <laughs> Mom. Yeah, I can I can drop out of the the okay. share. Okay. Okay. So I can go in. To, so there's a I have a shared button, and I just go in and hit edit, and there's a little red circle with the minus in it. And I think it's gone. Nice. I think they've I had that for a while, actually. Everything too. I, I think they had that since the last version because I think I shared something with my well, mother. Well, she was it. on iOS seven, so it's definitely it was available in last yeah. version. It never it may have been available in six. I don't know. I just thought it was really cool, and it was it was extremely simple. Yeah. Awesome. And I also, I also have like random albums in here now. Like I have one for Snapchat and one for Instagram mm-hmm. and one for Dropbox. You know, it's like it's getting kind of odd. Um, I want to do a couple quick hits here. Um, one cool thing. UPS now lets you use 3D printers uh, in nearly 100 U.S. stores. Any here? What? Here? Any here? I don't know. I, I'd, I'd imagine. I don't know. I wonder if they have it in the staples down the road. That would be pretty cool. It's probably the actual UPS stores. The video is hilariously bland. Like, it looks like like any bad training video, um, but it's about 3D printers, so it's it's kind of cool. Um, 100 stores across the U.S. Hardware is still concentrated in relatively small batch of cities, such as New York and Chicago, unfortunately. Uh, so I don't know if they reached out to, to, to Pittsburgh. So, But I would hope so. I would hope we'd be in one of the upper markets at least. So, uh, Microsoft has a new adapter that beams video to your PC or Android to a TV. Or front plate. Yeah, right? I had this. I had this on the the show notes from last week too. I rediscovered it over the last week. Apparently, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> no, we didn't cover it last week. I don't think it's no. using Mira, Miracast. Um, interesting concept. So more, more like I want to show my desktop than like Chromecast is. Um, 
It's Chromecast like, but not specifically for video. Correct. It's more like here's a HDMI cable from your device to your TV without the wire. Mm -hmm. Which I like that idea. I like that concept. I think it's important to be able to not just cast a single app or single thing. I want more and more. I find myself wanting to mirror an entire display. We, we do have a cat. You're not going crazy. Crap, he's got no, a cat. <laughs> <Bugging me. laughs> we got one on the couch here in the studio too. Um, real quick, uh, something that I wish I had in the at the Art Institute: the Bezier game, um, a game to help you master the pen tool. Um, if you're a Photoshop person, you know exactly what this is about. And it's the, the, the pen tool had been the bane of my assistant, my existence for the longest time. So if you need help with that, go to bezier.method.ac and you can go check that out as well. So, um, and it's a, it looks like it's an HTML5 game. So try it on your phone. I'm sure that would be fun. That'd be great. Um, uh, I remember I talked about automatic a while ago, the thing that goes on my OBD port and it talks to my phone over Bluetooth and I know all the miles and I know when I'm driving like an idiot. Um, they've just updated it. If uh, you have uh, sync with Ford or Lincoln, uh, it'll actually let you use Siri via the Bluetooth system. So um, our, our new car actually has the sync. It's one of the older ones, like with not the cool like app sync one, um, but we're kind of curious to see. Uh, what it might do, but I think we have to get another automatic because it's on the old rendezvous from like 2005. So another co- cool update there. Um, did you guys hear about the stupid kids trying to bend iPhones in Apple stores? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apparently these kids, they, they, they put the video on the internet. They obviously don't know how the internet works and they put their names on them. And uh, yeah, and they got, they got in trouble. I think they're British too. Well, that was like, there wasn't there a baseball player or something that got, caught stealing thousands and thousands of stuff from the Apple store. No, I, didn't hear, hear, I didn't hear that. No famous sports person. Huh. I don't know if it's baseball. I think it was a baseball player that was claiming they were checking out using the app store app and paying for things and then just walking out of the store. Wow. <laughs> Sooner or later, obviously it's worth a try. I suppose <laughs> we're just, we're just talking about that. Like, how does that work? How do they keep from shoplifting with that thing? Um, Cindy, you posted hello. I joined hello today. Hello. Hello. Um, so as with all social networks, uh, it's only interesting if you're following interesting people. And until today, I haven't really been following anyone. Um, but, um, I don't know. It's, it's very minimalist. Uh, I don't know. Did you try very much of it? Uh, I got in there. I, I poked around a little bit. Like I filled out my profile. I put, as you can see in the pictures uh, on the video version here, uh, you know, put a quick backdrop and everything. I mean, I'm matching everything up with what I put on all my other social networks. So I'm not terribly exciting there. I tried posting my uh, blog post from today for the podcast, you know, on here. And, and, and that's about it so far. Invited a bunch of people, you know, uh, we'll see where it goes. So the, the crux of this is, it's a social network that isn't going to sell your information like Facebook. It's not fine. You know, gathering all your stuff for potentially naughty things, I guess. And you're supposed to feel safer using it, you know, and I think, you know, uh, well, what was the other one? App.net who isn't around anymore, you know, which mm-hmm. was basically sound like it was that for Twitter. Um, but it's a great idea. <laughs> it's a nice idea. But I again, know, they, they, I think, seems, so they've got a manifesto, and I'm an, a big fan of anyone that has a manifesto. I just like people to feel strongly about things. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. so, so I'm very proud of them for that. And but the thing, and so we, you know, I guess the last time I was on, we talked about how ads are content that's in the wrong place. They're they're a kind of a weed, which isn't really a weed. But so these people very strongly feel like there's no place in the world for ads. And I guess my counterpoint to that is, if anyone, did you guys see the GE ad that is floating around YouTube right now hmm. with um, Jeff Goldblum on it? No. It was written by Tim no. and Eric. It's the funniest thing in the world. And it's informative, and it's great. And it's the perfect example of an ad that I love. And so and so I guess, you know, if their manifesto is all ads are terrible, all marketing is terrible, well, I just don't agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess if you're, yeah, that anti- 
I, I, but again, like uh, unless your friends get on there, and and it seems like all of our friends are getting on there. But I, but all for I, mm-hmm. I, but we're all for the same reason, right? Like, well, let's see what this is about, right? right. Like, we're we, early adopters. We, we want to be able to talk about we with each other, and we'll be talking about it with each other on the thing together. Does that kind of feel like Google Plus when it first started? You know, I, although I felt like there was a lot more promise Google Plus right off the gate um, than something like this. Um, I, I don't know. Like again, I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do with it. You know, I'm I, you're supposed to be social. I'm supposed to be social. I'm already <laughs> social in, in this many places. Where, but the aesthetic of it is so minimalist as to I I mean, hate it's, it. It's, I, it's, it's it's like it's like a, a monastery of a, of a social I, network. I'm not much of a design guy, but I know enough to know I hate this font. <laughs> 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 You know what they need? They need customized pages like MySpace. There you go. <laughs> Give me the sparklies and the music I'm that bring up my profile. I'm going to figure out my goal with Ello is to figure out how when you land on my page, it'll automatically send just play music regardless of what you do, unless you've disabled Flash. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. One way I or wonder, another. I mean, all you really need is a Google Chrome plugin, right? Yes. To... Right. Yes, this is going to happen. I'm going to break this thing. <laughs> <laughs> with, with they support animated gifs. I mean, let's 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 talk about the real the real issues in social media. <laughs> they do have um, emojis. They're big on that. Hey, I've been having a lot of fun with Power Rangers emojis on the fa- Facebook Messenger app lately. Um, you should you should see when I when I share the videos with all the wrestlers uh, for, after shows, like the the interesting stickers that I get to see after that. Um, so lo.co if you want to get in there and, um, and and request an invite or if you know one of us I, I think I got a couple left still I'm using I'm using I the one you gave me I can't wait I have I have given out no invites so I, if you want one let me know I, know, somebody I, asked, too, I too have given out none so between there the you two go. of us I got one left I gave one out to some random Twitter or that said she was doing some dissertation on social media um but she's not doing a good job at Twitter, I can tell you that much. But she got an invite from me, so whatever. Um, but yeah, there you go. Uh, I'm Sorgatron on there. Everybody seems to be their same name that I've noticed so far. So Uncle Crappy. I'm C. Klosky, just yeah. to just to freak everybody out. C. Klosky. C. Klosky. How am I going to find you? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey, I joined Emojly. E E M O J L I the app on the iPhone. I got in. Nobody's friended me on there. I okay. am. Hold on. I'm Monkey Pizza. Um, I forget which monkey I am. Hold on. <laughs> monkey Pizza. It's one of those see no evil, hear no evil monkeys. I can't. I think it's the. I think it's the speak no evil one. Um. Why can't I figure out who I am? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! It's this monkey with the ears, and then pizza. That's my username. So uh, find me on there. I need friends on Emojily. Um, I have no idea what this is, but I'm going to find you. You need to find I'll, it. You, I, I, I'll, uh, I don't know if I can send you an invite or something. Uh, we we played the video, and it sounds like a joke. Even the video is like this sounds like a joke, but it's a social network where all you need is emojis. There is no text whatsoever in the social network. Oh, I'm way too old for that. <laughs> I am, I am. Or you're just right men- mentally. <laughs> um, kind of on the same line. Where did I find that? Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Pingsy. Pingsy. Um, it's an app that uh, all you get are these icons. Uh, you know, time. Uh, 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 let's go eat. Let's go have a coffee. Let's go. Was it uh, get a beer at the bottom there? So I slide the the icon see if i can line up here for you guys on video so i slide the icon okay i did this before and i select the time moves up and down selects a time and i select whoever i want to send it to and i'll send an emoji of let's go eat or let's have a beer and the time and that's it and that's all the app does is send a text with emojis <laughs> This might be the thing that gets me to use emojis. This is like, isn't it there, wasn't there a thing like it a social be. network where you just said yo that came out a couple months ago? There's a network yo. Yeah. Yeah. It's exactly yeah. like that. But, well, actually, this is a, a very much larger vocabulary. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Beer, time, you know, whatever. Um, okay. That's enough. That's enough for this week. 
<laughs> we're getting we're getting into the the digging. Uh, shout out to Ohio Linux Fest. We should have them on here uh, in the next couple weeks. OhioLinux.org. Um, that's October uh, 24th through 26th in uh, Columbus, the convention center in downtown Columbus. Mm-hmm. Greater Columbus Convention Center in downtown Columbus. I read that wrong. Um, if you guys want more techie talk from me, uh, I have a couple... Uh, I have a kind of a no topics specific podcast I call Good Morning because I get up. I almost put a picture of what I looked like when I went and did my podcast this morning. <laughs> um, but I did one on the state of variables with Google Glass and the watches and everything, and another one on the uh, streaming event from last week um, using YouTube Live. You can check those out. I'm now posting those over at Sorgatron.com, my blog. It has content now. I'm excited. Um, also, we spoke last week with Josh Lucas of uh, the hardware store, workhardpgh.com. Uh, they've also posted on their YouTube channels the Fall Pitch Fest session, so go check that out. Uh, guys, we talked about the Duo Screen uh, guys that we that are on Kickstarter. They're coming out, Thrill Mill. Uh, they did a 90-second pitch. I don't know if they posted that video yet, but it should be on there. Um, oh, I, the cl- cloud audio editing guys. That's going to bug me that I'm forgetting the name. Neuro something. Um, but they pitched as well. Uh, they're, they're coming out of Alpha Lab right now. Um, so go check that out. Uh, 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 workhardpgh.com is the site. Go to their YouTube channel, and they got a playlist right there. Um, pretty cool because they got, people got to do like 10 minutes in 90-second pitches. Like like they had people just come up and say, hey, you want to do you know, it, 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 kind of an open floor. They had a couple spots. Uh, so it was interesting to hear uh, a couple of cool things really, really early in the process for the most part. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else? Anything else I'm missing coming up, Chilla? No, I guess. Awesome. Chilla's at Chilla on the tweeters. Yep, that's me. Hopefully we'll be seeing another Apple announcement soon, and, and we'll be seeing another Google announcement soon. Yep. Mike Pound is... Oh, i got to turn that off. Mike Pound is UncleCrappy.com. Uncle Crappy on the tweets as well. Anything else I'm allowed to talk about? You mysterious, mysterious man. I work downtown. <laughs> <laughs> for a large media company. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cynthia Klosky, she's big, big design.com. Cynthia Klosky on the tweeters. Yes. And I, my blog, I actually posted on my blog too, um, my brilliant mistakes.com. So hopefully bring in that back. Yes. Go, go get that blog and go. Oh, Pittsburgh bloggers had a, had an anniversary. So if you're not, if people have a blog and aren't <laughs> on Pittsburgh bloggers, pghbloggers.org, list your blog, please. I mean, I might need to re repost some of mine. <laughs> I've had some movements. Wow. Yeah, it's still going. Pittsburgh bloggers. Get your stuff on there. Um, and remind me to ask you after the show about, about something about Butler. Um, and also you can find us, awesomecast.net, uh, on the tweeters, uh, on awesomecast, on Google+, on Facebook. Um, you can also join us here live at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, every Tuesday. Is that your cat that I'm hearing? <laughs> that's not my cat. That's, that's not a your child. cat? It's a child. Oh, that is my, a child. Oh, I'm like, why does this cat like sound like a child? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is it coming from here? Is it coming from my headphones? I don't, I, I'm not even sure anymore. Um, where was I? Big thanks to Mike Allen at Mike Allen PR for helping with the tweets and the notes all night long. Big thanks to our uh, awesome chat room. Yelling Comic Sans uh, about 15 minutes ago, apparently. <laughs> um, um, and you can uh, please follow, subscribe to us on iTunes, on YouTube, on Spreaker, on iHeartRadio, on uh, uh, what am I missing in there? Stitcher, I guess. Audio and video forums. Please, please subscribe. Please comment. Please star us. It, it does help us uh, get discovered by new people uh, and get this out there. Uh, please check out our Patreon if you want to support the show that way at patreoncom awesomecast. Um, and you know, one way to try to make it in podcasting there you go we're talking about that earlier and please check out uh, nationalpodcastingday.org.com you can google it um they have a lot of information up there resources if you are a podcaster if you're looking for podcasts um they got something for you up there and i hope you enjoyed today i hope i hope you have discovered some podcasts today um so thank you to our awesome chat room thank you our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.